Hello everybody, I am Mark Lahr, and this is part four of the MoTeC telemetry guide we're doing here on YouTube. In this video, we're going to go over making a new worksheet so you can start to customize views for things that you want to look at. In particular, I'm going to make a new view looking at brake data as well as tire data. So I'll be looking at things like the tire pressures, temperatures, the brake temperatures, I'll also be looking at how those things affect the car and what happens to the car if your brakes are too hot, for example. I have a great example of that that I'll show you, and you'll be able to see exactly what happens when your brakes are too hot. So, with all that being said, let's get started. So starting from where we left off in the last video, we have our track map here. I didn't edit all the turns on this one, which is why it looks all weird, but this is Zolder and just a random lap I have selected here. So the first thing that we want to do to sort of customize our view is we need to make a new worksheet. So to do that, it's really simple. We're just going to come up to this gray area, right click and go to new worksheet and we can call it whatever we want. Um, I'm going to call it, I don't know, uh, break data. Sure. And this just opens up a blank worksheet. So what we want to do is add information in here. And to do that, we right click, go to add. And we see these time distance graph. There's all sorts of things you can add here. But for this video, we're just going to stick with the time and distance graph. And once we click that, a window pops up and says, you know, what do you want to add? So let's add a group. It'll just be called group one for now. And we could add channel as well. And here we're going to type in break and we're going to see all four, you know, break temperature, left front, left rear, right front, right rear. Um, we can shift click and select all of them and hit OK. And then we can just hit OK. And here we have the break temperatures throughout whatever lap we select. I do also want to add more information to this. So now that we have this, we can easily add and remove data from this view. Um, just simply by right clicking and going to properties and it brings up the original window that we saw when we first set it up. So there's a couple things that I want to add to this view. So I'm going to add another group and in that group, I'm going to add a couple channels and I think what's called tire. Yeah. So let's get all the tire pressures and I'm going to add one more group and add all the tire air is what a T air. Um, this is the temperature of the tire. I don't know why it's called T air instead of T temp, but that's ACC. So each group that you add here separates out, you know, sort of a group here. If I were to add the tire pressures into this other group, it would just be one big sort of range and the, you know, the units wouldn't really line up. So basically a group is exactly what it sounds like a grouping of things that you want to see together. So this is good for now. However, one of the things that we can see is that here, the tire pressure doesn't really appear to be changing, although the graph is moving up and down, right? This just says 29, basically the whole lap. And then that is not really correct. Sort of similar situation with the air temperature or air temperature with the tire temperature down here. It's really easy to fix. And what we want to do is just change how many decimals this has. So there's two ways to do it. One, you can go back into the properties here, edit each one of these individual channels and tell it however many decimals you want. Um, if we do that one at a time, right, you can see now that this has three decimals. And if we drag around, you know, it's a little bit more accurate, I would say. The other way to do that, so you don't have to do that for every channel. So I'll set this back to zero. And I'll show you the other way to do that. So if we come into one of these icons up here, oh, the channel editor or apparently control E. Once this loads, we can go down and find the channel that we're looking for. In this case, it was what the T press. So we can do the same thing. We can shift click these four and hit edit. And here we can just say 
whatever, three decimals. Okay. And there, just like that, we have three decimals here. I'm going to do that same thing for the temperature of the tire, although I don't think I'm going to go to three decimals. That seems a little high. So let's edit these and we'll just go, we'll go with two. And this will now save for any time that you want to use the tire pressures or the tire temperatures. Another cool thing that we can do here is that in ACC, we know what the tire pressures and temperatures should be. So we can actually set sort of limits on this. If we come to the group that we want a limit on and hit edit, uh, we can show a min line. Let's say we want a minimum of uh, 20, 27.5. This is in PSI. Um, we'll just make that red. It doesn't really matter what color you pick. And we'll say 30. No, 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 no. That's way too high. Uh, 27.9. Um, and we'll just make both these limits red and hit OK. And now you can see these dotted lines here. So let me let me zoom in a little bit. Actually, um, I can change the range a little bit so that's easier to see. We don't need it to be from 24 to 28. Let's just say we want it to be from, I don't know, 27 to 28. Whoops, sorry, 28.5. And that will stretch this out a little bit, maybe a little bit too much. Let me change that again. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, edit that. We'll change it to 29 and 26.5, just to make it a little easier. So here we can see that on this particular lap, our tire pressure was outside of this red line. I actually am going to change that color just so it's easier to see. I'm going to try to pick a color that we've not used. Uh, I, yeah, no, use yellow, orange. We'll go orange. Why not? Orange, orange, orange. So ideally in ACC, we want to be within these tire pressures. And actually, that's wrong. According to the internet, the, the tire pressures we want to be within are 27.3 to 27.8 So we can hit OK there. And we'll also leave this on just auto scale because it's easier to see a little bit. I'm just going to zoom out so that we can see a little bit more data over the course of a lap to see if our tire pressures were too high or too low. And here it clearly looks like our left front is too high while our right rear is too low. So that's just some interesting data we can look at. I believe on a later lap I had fixed that. Let's see. We'll go back. We'll go back to these couple laps and no, I was wrong. Looks like our tire pressures are just lower than they should be over the whole, whole stint. We can see that very rarely were they in the correct zone. So we, we you know, now know that we need to increase our tire temperatures. We can also do the same thing with the temperatures for the tires. Um, so again, that's just right click, go to properties, uh, the group that you want, you're just going to edit that and set set the limits if you want. In this case, I believe tires are like 75 to let's just say 90. I believe it is. We'll do orange again. And here within this window is the ideal operating range for tires in ACC. So, you know, there's some adjustments we can be made here. A similar thing goes with the brake. These brake temperatures are really quite high. And then later I open my brake ducts a little more to lower these down. And one of the things that's interesting about this is how much longer it takes to brake when your brake temperatures are this high versus when they're in the right zone. I was going to dive into what it looks like when your brake temperatures are too high and how that affects braking performance, but this video is already nine minutes long, so I think I'm going to do that in the next video, so stay tuned for that. But that's all I have for now, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below if you have any questions or something you want to see covered in a future video. So thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.